Hi, this is PDF Bergzerk Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 224. Now the last few days we've been working on our particle systems, so I'm just going to continue along with that. So I'll start off by opening up Unity. And let's see what's next. So we're going to go to Component, Particles, and Particles. We've done the ellipsoid, we've done a mesh, uh, we've done a particle animator. We have not worked with a, part a world particle animator, so we'll do that one next. So let's just come into our scene and I'm just going to add a particle system. I'll zoom in on it. And about oh, there's right, I'm going to lower it just a bit. Uh, let's just make it 60. And we'll see where that puts us in game. Okay, I probably want it a little higher than that. I want it higher than the character, basically. There we go. And I'm going to shrink all these down. And I'm going to go ahead and add a World Particle Collider. Now the World Particle Collider basically allows the particles that you're generating with your particle system to interact with other game objects or anything it collides with. Uh, so let's just quickly go over the, the parameters. So the bounce factor is basically just how much this particle is going to bounce when it collides with another collider. Uh, collision energy loss is uh, when it hits something and it bounces you know in another direction uh, what when it has that initial hit it's going to lose a little bit of energy and this will say how much energy it loses uh, collides with uh, this this is the layer we want it to collide with and there's already some that unity builds by default now if we look up here at the layers it's important to note that you, sure you can add new layers uh, but you only have so many it only goes up to 31 and it starts at zero. So you can have a total of 32 different layers in your game, but you can never add any more. So if you end up using all these up and you know that you can only start at eight, uh, the first eight are actually used. Uh, but if you use all these up, uh, you're out of layers. So you are you should kind of manage these because you know they're, they're not infinite. Uh, whereas your tags, I believe you can just keep making all the tags you really need. I've never run out of them anyway. Uh, so what's next? Uh, send colli collision message. Uh, when your particle collides, you can actually have it send a message. And minimum kill velocity. Basically, when a particle slows down to a certain speed, uh, that's when it will die. And you can specify that here. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, the variable names are are pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and look at you know how we can use this. Uh, a very simple demonstration would be uh, some sort of environmental effect so let's let's make some snow that's a pretty simple one so first off I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna want this to be fairly uh, big for an area so I'm gonna start off going two on the X two on the Z and I'm not worried about the Y because it's gonna be up overhead and they shouldn't be able to see it anyway uh, that's not quite big enough so I'm gonna make it even bigger maybe five by five uh, that's a pretty good size for what I want. I am going to increase the number of particles because I want a fairly heavy snowfall. So we'll increase it to 100. Alright, that's getting there. I'm probably going to want to move that up a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some world velocity. Uh, well, snow falls down, right? So I'll start it off at a 1. And it, whoops, it should be a negative number because you want it to go down. And it's going down not exactly fast enough for the way I want it so I'm just going to increase this to negative two and of course you can tinker around with it get the speed you actually want uh, but if you look down at the ground here you'll notice the particles when they hit they bounce uh, I don't exactly want my snow to bounce so I'm actually going to take the bounce factor put it to zero now when it's landing on the ground you'll notice it's actually just staying there on the ground it doesn't bounce doesn't disappear it just sits there and of course, if I actually increase this a bit more, uh, we can get some more snowfall actually on the ground. Uh, that's a little faster for my snow. It looks a little more like the speed of rain. Uh, so let's actually go take a look at this in game. Now I don't actually have a snow texture, but you should be able to change your own texture and get the basic idea of it. Uh, so the, basically the way I'm going to have this work is I'm going to have this particle system follow my character around and it's not going to be parented to, or child to the character. Actually, let's, let's just demonstrate. If we go back in and take a look, uh, when the player runs, I want it to follow the player. 
I did it the wrong way. <laughs> uh, let me just come back into scene and take the player out of there. I meant to do it the other way. I do not want to have the particle system uh, being child a child of uh, our character because uh, when they run around, uh, there is one thing I am going to have to adjust here. If it was a child, we'd want to set its position. So the offset would be 0 and 0 on the X and the Y. And I'll just leave it at that height above the uh, player. And everything looks great, except when you run, it's not going to follow you right away. And if we turn it, went ahead and turned off the simulate and world space, it now will stay with us. But if you notice, uh, when you turn and everything else, the particles turn with you. So I think the actual best way, at least the way I'm going to try to start off with, is just you know have a script that I have attached to the particle system and just have it actually follow the character and possibly be a little bit bigger. Uh, but that's the scripting stuff. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, one thing I did actually want to look at was to see how much snow was gathering on the ground. My particles might actually be too small to actually be showing that they're gathering on the ground. You can see them. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them in the video. But you can see them when they collide with the ground. They're just sitting there for a bit before they dissolve. So let's turn that off. Uh, for rain, well, actually, let's keep working with the snow. Rain's pretty easy once you know snow. Uh, for snow, you kind of want it to float around a little bit, I guess, depending on the wind. So I am going to add some random velocity and not a whole lot. 0.2 should be good. And we'll just go back in. We'll just take a look. And we'll notice now that it's not just falling straight down. It's got a little bit of, uh, they all move in a, just a slightly bit of a different direction. I actually might increase that a bit. Or we can just look at the next property. Uh, let me see. We can have it rotate, uh, the actual particles themselves rotate. Since I don't have a texture, there's probably no point in doing that. Once you add your texture, you might want to do that. I'm going to come down to my particle animator. I'm going to add a bit of force. Uh, let's say, mm, I'm just going to start off at 0.5. And I'll do all of them. Uh, let's start this back up. It may be moving a little fast now, but there we go. Yeah, I think that's a little too fast. And I added it to the force, so it's all moving in the same direction, which isn't what I want. I wanted the random force. So we'll just come back up here. There we go. We'll start this back up. And here we go. All of them should be moving a little bit differently from each other. And I'm actually going to move it a little bit lower to the ground. Oh, let's do 60 because I really would like to show how... There we go. You should be able to see it now, how it's collecting on the ground a lot more. And let's go ahead and increase that bounce factor so that you can actually see it bounce. I believe it started at 0.5. There we go. So as you can see, it hits the ground and bounces immediately back up, which isn't what we want. Not for snow. Now for rain, you might want a little bit of a bounce factor uh, when it hits the ground, uh, but you probably wouldn't want that much. Let's see how much rain, 0.1 is probably still too much. Yeah. And for rain, you'd also want to adjust your minimum uh, velocity. So let's start that. Still not quite right. Well, for rain, it would be falling faster to begin with. And it wouldn't be so random. But anyway, I don't want to balance for snow. Uh, but anyway, the World Particle Collider, pretty simple. Uh, great for creating stuff like snow and other environmental effects. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye. Oh, and before I go, one more thing. Um, we are going to be having a live show this week. Um, if you're watching this video when it first goes up, which will be, uh, I believe, the 20th this weekend. Let me just quickly check. Uh, date and time. 
yes, on the 20th. And I've got the date listed on my channel down in the events section. And it should also be listed uh, on the website. Uh, it's just going to be a basic, you know, kind of a meet and greet where we just get together and talk. There's no interview or anything else. But anyway, I hope uh, to see everyone there. And uh, again, thanks for watching. And don't forget to upload your particle system so everyone else can see what you're working on. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.